As I was preparing to write about my favorite games from PAX West 2024, one thing stood out to me. There were a ton of horror games on the show floor this year. The genre seems to be growing as more indie developers discover new ways to frighten players and immerse us in unique environments using any development means possible. There were titles from across all budgets, but how these developers craft horror experiences within these small teams can't be understated. There's so much charm and creativity packed into each of these games that every time I think about them, I just want to share how freaking cool they were to play. So here it is. I wrote a list of my favorite horror games from PAX 2024. Be sure to let us know which stands out to you in the comments below. One of the standout horror games at PAX West was Draculisty. This narrative-driven experience puts a unique take on the classic Dracula lore that highlights characters often overshadowed in the original. As Roger Renfield, you're drawn into the dark, complex world of Castle Dracula, where vampires, spirits, and even contract law are part of the unsettling narrative. The game just did a fantastic job of combining rich, atmospheric environments with character-driven storytelling. During the demo, I was able to witness the supernatural forces at play, but also get an introduction to the complex relationships, with Renfield himself caught between the allure of his love interests and his own survival. Each character appears to be fully realized, and decisions carry weight as you explore the four different story routes, filled with dark choices and consequences. What grabbed our attention was the visual novel adventure elements. I'm pretty good at spotting games that our community would enjoy learning about, and this game is one of them. Dracula C manages to blend horror, romance, and some surprising elements of humor into a memorable experience. Edge of Sanity took psychological horror to another level with its haunting 2D art style and Cthulhu-inspired narrative. Set in the wilderness of Alaska, you're part of a team trying to survive in a world teetering on the edge of madness. The game's emphasis on survival mechanics was palatable as I explored dark caves and ruined laboratories in search of supplies. Each decision felt crucial, whether in managing food for your camp or deciding how to deal with your dwindling sanity. The game's approach to resource management and mental health mechanics is meant to make you feel the isolation and fear even more intensely, and I think it works. The constant threat of losing my mind made the demo's expedition tense, especially as I encountered creatures born from the depths of my worst nightmares. These enemies are not to be underestimated, and the combat requires careful planning to exploit weaknesses. I found myself constantly weighing the risks of confrontation versus retreat. The layered storytelling combined with the Cold War setting gives Edge of Sanity a unique and chilling identity within the survival horror genre. Thankfully, we don't have to wait too long for its release. At first glance, Tarnished Blood might seem like a typical action-heavy RPG, but its deeply immersive world and layered combat system quickly sets it apart. The game allows players to manipulate time itself, which adds a dynamic twist to every battle. As you face off against massive, bloodthirsty bosses, you'll have to think critically about how to use your time-bending abilities to stay one step ahead. What stood out to me during the demo was how the timeline system felt intuitive, giving me full control over my character's actions while creating opportunities for impressive combos and counterattacks. Beyond the combat, Tarnished Blood introduces players to a richly detailed world filled with bizarre creatures and moral dilemmas. The Permanent body modifications like petrification and cut off limbs made for some shocking moments and I quickly realized that each decision had lasting consequences on my playthrough. There are a lot of systems here to explore though, so I'm looking forward to covering this game as we get closer to launch. Slitterhead delivers an unsettling yet exhilarating action adventure experience set in the chaotic streets of Kao Long. As Hayoki, who is a mysterious entity without a physical form, your mission is to hunt down the terrifying Slitterheads. These are creatures that mimic humans in disturbing ways. What caught my attention was how seamlessly Hiyoki's possession mechanic integrated into the gameplay. I was able to slip into different human bodies, using them to navigate the city and infiltrate enemy groups. The fast-paced nature of switching between hosts kept the action flowing, while also adding a layer of strategy to how I approached each area. The game's combat is just intense, with Hayoki using blood-based abilities to fight back against the Slitterheads. Still, even in dire situations, I could switch bodies to continue the fight, making each battle feel like a tense survival dance. Slitterhead's neon-lit dystopian cityscape combined with its high-speed action creates a fresh take on horror, blending suspense and thrill in a way that kept me on the edge of my seat through the demo. Heartworm taps into the classic survival horror roots of games like Silent Hill and Resident Evil, but with its own modern twists. As Sam, a woman grieving the loss of her loved ones, you're lured to a mysterious house after following a cryptic online lead. 
The moment I stepped into the haunting atmosphere of this isolated location, I felt a chill, and the pre-rendered cutscenes combined with surreal atmospheric visuals sets the tone for an unnerving journey into psychological horror. The game doesn't rely on jump scares, but rather builds tension slowly, creeping up on you with its unsettling environments and eerie puzzles. The combat system is just as unique, using a camera as your primary weapon to fend off different types of enemies, you know, like in Fiddle Frame. What struck me during the demo was the balance between exploration and survival, with each room offering new clues or hidden threats. The retro-inspired pixel effects were a nostalgic nod to the horror games of late 90s, but hardware manages to feel fresh with its compelling narrative and emotional depth. Psycho Giantess Dating Sim isn't your typical horror genre, but its unsettling atmosphere and bizarre premise certainly qualifies as a unique experience. It also helps if your preferences just so happen to be a giant waifu. Playing as Rin, a human currently under the watch of a giant girl named Psycho, you're tasked with managing the well-being of the other people that she keeps in her drawer. The game's pixel art style mixed with the strange, almost unsettling themes gives it a distinct vibe. Every interaction with Psycho feels tense, as the wrong move could lead to disastrous consequences for you and the others in her care. While the premise might sound outlandish, Psycho Giantess Dating Sim does a great job of balancing its weirdness with some genuinely interesting gameplay mechanics. Managing the state of the little people and ensuring Psycho's desires are met turns the game into a twisted management sim where survival is at stake. It's a bizarre but fascinating take on horror, blending everyday tasks with an underlining sense of dread that keeps you on your toes. Mouthwashing left me feeling deeply unsettled in the best possible way. Set aboard a dying space freighter, the game places you in the shoes of a crew member trying to survive amidst the wreckage of a ship with no hope of rescue. The sense of isolation and desperation is palpable as you explore the decaying vessel, piercing together the story of Captain Curly's doomed crew. The immersive storytelling kept me fairly engaged in this demo setting, with the environmental clues hinting at the psychological breakdowns of the characters. What really stood out in mouthwashing was his focus on psychological horror. The visuals play tricks on your perception, and the narrative makes you question what's real and what's imagined. As the ship's systems fail and food supplies dwindle, the stakes rise, turning every decision into a life or death scenario. Mouthwashing is a perfect example of how horror can be as much about the mind as it is about the monsters lurking in the dark. The pixel art in Urban Myth Dissolution Center is a visual feast for horror fans offering a psychedelic spin on urban legends. In this game, you play as Azumi Fukurai, a newly hired detective tasked with unraveling bizarre cases of monstrous oddities and dimensional anomalies. What drew me in was how each episode felt like its own self-contained mystery, but also contributed to the overarching narrative. The investigation mechanics were engaging, with the player gathering clues from both social media posts and physical evidence creating an immersive detective experience. The case I was able to play felt distinct, with the game cleverly weaving real-world urban myths into the narrative. The characters, particularly Ayuma Megadaya, added to the sense of mystery, providing psychic insight into each case. Urban Myth Dissolution Center does a fantastic job of keeping the player engaged with this episodic structure, and the unsettling pixel art only enhances the eerie atmosphere as you dive deeper into each myth. PAX West 2024 delivered a rich variety of horror titles that showcase the creativity and passion of developers across the gaming spectrum. As we look forward to these releases, it's safe to say that horror fans will have plenty to play in the coming months. Keep these games on your radar and be sure to keep following our coverage of each of these titles. Pixel.